Today we're going to talk about building in The Sims, but specifically about roofing, because let's be honest, a lot of times the hardest part of making a house is trying to figure out the roof. Now, I made a video kind of like this one a few years ago, but that was a long time ago. And so today we're making an updated roofing tutorial, a builder's Bible, if you will. And hopefully I can answer some of your most commonly asked questions about like how to do roofs in The Sims. I think we'll start by showing you a few different houses and a few wildly different types of roofs. So for example, this house has a flat roof. Well, not exactly flat. It's got a bunch of different platforms of a bunch of different heights to sort of create this interesting multi-leveled looking house. Platforms are relatively new to The Sims 4, but they're very useful for trying to make roofs, especially flat roofs like this, because you don't want like a completely flat roof. But with the platforms, you can have something that's flat, but still looks really interesting. And all you have to do is build a platform and then put little teeny tiny half walls around the whole edge. And then you can paint it, make it blend in, and it looks super cool. I'll explain more later. This house, for example, has a very traditional look roof, but a lot of pieces. There's a lot of different things going on. And this one's kind of complicated because I've got a second floor hidden amongst the roofing. And so you can kind of see it clipping a little bit in some places. But I think most notably about this house, the main bits of the building have these hipped roofs. And then any like decorative sort of dormer type things have these gabled roofs. And I find myself doing that a lot as well. Again, I'll explain more later. This house looks a bit simpler from the outside. It's got some dormers, but upstairs, there's actually a second floor hidden amongst the roof. And this is kind of complicated to do, but not really. It takes a bunch of different roof pieces. You'll see that all of these things are little tiny separate roof pieces. And I think that makes it seem a lot more daunting than it actually is. But this is one of my favorite ways to build houses in The Sims. I like to hide second floors amongst the roof. And the reason I've done it like this is because if I wanted to put just a, a regular roof up there, it fits, it looks great, it works, nothing wrong with it. But when you actually go to play inside, you have to have the walls down, it's annoying to play with, it's really difficult. So what we do instead is put little tiny roof pieces everywhere <laughs> and fill up the whole thing separately. And it's all just a workaround to avoid clipping because you'll see that because there's like this area has the open stairs, the roof clips in, so we have to put them like around the whole thing. So that's the hard part. Honestly, with roofing, the hard part is, is just figuring out what you want to do and then working around weird Sims glitches. But I will show you how to do that now. I'm gonna quickly show you some roofing tricks that might help you and kind of explain what all of these random buttons mean because there's a lot of arrows and they're kind of confusing. So these little arrows on the left and right side, these remove the overhang. So if you don't want an overhang on the left and right side, you want it to be flat against the wall, you can remove those, but you can also remove just one side at a time. To do that, you have to hold shift. And so I can have the overhang on the right, but not on the left or, or vice versa. The same thing goes for the other overhangs, the ones that hang off the bottom. You can remove it if you want, but you can also hold shift just to get rid of one side. And of course you can make them bigger or smaller. You can make just one side bigger if you want, again, by holding shift. So keep that in mind, holding shift changes just the one side. Obviously there's arrows to move it, make it smaller, to make it taller or shorter. The little dots in the middle can let you curve the roof. You can make it like big and round like a mushroom or hair. <laughs> You can also make it sort of pointy and rounded. This is kind of confusing. There's a lot of like keyboard tricks that are necessary, but if you press shift C while clicked onto a roof, it like rounds it and opens up another set that you can use. So again, that's shift C while clicked on a roof. Do you see how it gives me a bunch more dots? I don't really understand it either, but that's how it works. And then you can move it in like multiple different directions, but you have to press shift C to access that. The same goes for other roof types as well. For some reason, the hipped roof by default doesn't overhang, but I always make it overhang because I just like it better when it hangs off a little bit. I think it looks weird when it's right up against the house. I must warn you that these like more rounded roofs are kind of weird and glitchy and they clip a lot for some reason. But like sometimes I'll try to put them inside of a house and it's just sometimes not always, but sometimes I'll put it in a house and then it'll start clipping on the inside and I don't really know what causes it. But like for some reason, when I draw a wall there, it starts clipping. It wasn't before, but now there's a wall and it clips for whatever reason. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes these rounded roofs, um, <laughs> are very frustrating to deal with. They look nice though. Another weird thing, the diagonal roofs are like by default significantly shorter than the other ones, which can be kind of weird and confusing when you're trying to build stuff. And when you're making flat roofs, I highly recommend using at least a small platform. It just looks better that way. And then you can kind of like create fun, interesting separate parts by like having a flat roof that's multiple levels. And a lot of times what I'll like to do, what? 
<laughs> Why is that glitching into the void? Anyway, what I like to do is put half walls around the platform, kind of like in this house, because then you can make the wall seem like it's a little bit taller. And there's like a million different half wall heights, but all you gotta do is draw the half wall around it, and then you can paint it however you want. You aren't stuck using just the regular platform trims. And there are a lot of platform trims, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you do the half wall trick, you can paint it however you want. You can use any wallpaper in the game, so you can make it match the rest of your house super easily. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to build build like a really generic house and how I would roof it. A lot of times I start with a rectangle, just a basic rectangle, and then I might add like some things to it, you know, add some bump outs, make it more interesting, get a little bit of a porch, maybe like a sunroom, maybe the backyard is slightly different. And then I wanna follow the second floor up with that same rectangle. And then I might do it like this. It's not a super complicated building, but the roof is kind of daunting because it's like, how? To, where do I put anything? So the pro tip I always give is to put the roof on the biggest part of the house first. Remember that like original rectangle we started with? I always put the main roof on that main like original rectangle. And a lot of times I'll do one of these gabled roofs and you'll want the like, face <laughs> of the gabled roof to be on the side. Because if you do it like this, it looks massive and it's kind of scary. Basically always put that face on the skinniest part. I mean, they're, you know, do what you want, but <laughs> that's how I usually do it. They're obviously gonna be like different circumstances for it, but I feel like it always looks like it blends in the best when you do it that way. So same thing in the front, we get the face on the skinniest part instead of putting the face like this way, because then it becomes massive. In the back, we'll do the same thing. And you might notice that this roof is like a little bit tall. You know, it doesn't blend in properly. Most of the time you want all of your roof pieces to like blend in and go very smoothly into this main roof piece, the, the horizontal one, because it just looks better that way like when they all sort of blend in and fit. And so you could just make it taller if you wanted to. You could make these shorter if you wanted to for it to fit. But something I always try to do is try to get all of the roofs on like the same side of a house to be the same angle and the same height. Cause it looks kind of weird when these don't like blend into each other. So I'd always put these like this. And then if I was gonna, for some reason, have like a bump out or something, I'd want that to be the same height too. I just think it looks better that way. Sometimes I think it looks a little bit off when there's like a, a way taller one. It doesn't always look bad, but sometimes it looks a little bit weird. So a general rule of thumb is to, to make sure that all of the ones that are on the same side are the same height. But I think in most situations, I think for this roof, I'd probably use a different roof type. I'd probably put one of these half gabled roofs and sort of like, blend it in that way. I don't know, maybe like that. I always think it's kind of interesting to have like different roof types. I feel like it makes the house look a little bit better. I wanna get a roof on the porch in the front of the house. Now you see how like on the side of the house, it's it's kind of just stops there. It's clipping a little bit, it looks kind of weird. There are a couple ways around that. One, you could do that shift trick to get rid of the overhang on just that one side. So we keep the overhang on this side, but deleted it on the right. Or you could drag the whole thing back and like hide it in a different roof. It kind of depends what your house looks like. Sometimes. I would probably drag it back and hide it in this like side roof that we've got, but it, most of the time it's easiest to just put it up against the edge. I do the same thing on the back of the house. But then you have that weird problem on the side where it kind of overhangs a little bit. So you could just, you know, hide it, do the shift trick so that you still have the overhang in some places, but not against the wall. You could also drag the whole thing all the way across the building. Sometimes I do this on purpose. I like, I think it kind of looks cool to have that splitting up the, the first and second floors. So you could always do that. We have that issue again with like this main roof on the front. And I always get rid of this by having the roof come in two pieces. <laughs> this is where it gets kind of complicated and you don't have to do this, but it bothers me. So I do it. First step, you wanna drag the roof back to be like flush with the edge of the main one and then hold shift to get rid of the overhang. So it kind of just barely clips a little bit in the corner. And then you wanna duplicate that roof, put it back so it still fills up the whole space. And then on this piece, you're gonna get rid of all of the overhang. And so the whole roof still fits. It looks like it's the exact same size as before. We've just put it down in two separate pieces to make sure that we don't have that like weird overhang problem just randomly in the middle of the building. Sometimes to hide it, I'll put a chimney on the house as well, which is also a thing you could do. The links that I will go to to hide weird roof issues. I just want the roofs to be like flush with each other at all times. So you could also put a chimney and then put the roof back into the chimney and then nowhere else. And that works too, you've got options. But this is like a pretty generic house. This is pretty much how I roof like all of my houses in The Sims. This is a very good starting point. Remember, I just put the biggest roof on the biggest part first. And you want that face 
to be on the skinniest part. If I was gonna use a different roof type, I'd still do the same thing. I'd roof that main part first. And honestly, it's kind of fun to, to mix and match the roof types. I think it always looks good to have like some combos. And I think this is a nice touch. It all depends like what you're trying to build and, and what you're going for. If you want dormers, a lot of times the roof isn't tall enough to really fit them very well. And probably not this roof type either. <laughs> but dormers are nice and they don't have to be anything fancy. Like you don't have to have a whole floor up here for them. You can literally just put a couple random boxes on the third floor and have like fake ones. Who cares about function? We only care about style. <laughs> and then you can just stick some roofs on them and have a cute little dormer. Sometimes you've got issues with like clipping, like sometimes the roof is a little bit too big and stuff like that. That's when you might want to do that shift thing just to remove one part of it. I also sometimes, because these are like the exact same height, I might make the roof a little bit taller so they don't like touch the exact top, but it looks nice. And like I said, that's pretty much how I would roof like any generic house that I build in The Sims. Let's talk about some slightly more complicated things now. Like the house that I built next door still has dormers, but it's got like a whole secret second floor hidden up there. So how did I do that? Same thing, house begins with a big rectangle. <laughs> that house also has a little bit of front porch, but you can do whatever you want with the front. We're just talking about the roof today. And it's pretty much the same. Like I basically just wanted to put a big gabled roof up top. Now there are a couple limitations here and you can kind of see it on the roof. Cause if I wanted to put a second floor up here, it doesn't quite fit. So what we need to do is make sure that there's space on the roof for that second floor. So a lot of times you might want to have to make the house a little bit bigger. Suddenly this house has space for a two tile second floor where it won't clip with the roof any bigger and then you can see it sticking out the sides. This one's got space for a three tile upstairs and that's nice and all putting the roof like this. It looks okay, but I don't know about you. I just, you can't see what you're doing. Like when you try and like go in with the walls down, you have to put the walls all the way down to furnish up here. And that's really annoying. Like it looks good. We have this hidden second floor, but you can't actually use it because you have to put the walls all the way down to see it. So what we're gonna do is build this shape, but with multiple roof pieces. I'm just gonna delete the whole thing. And essentially what we'll do is we'll put a half gabled roof on each side and then a gabled roof on top. And now it looks exactly the same, but we can actually see the inside now. No clipping, problem is solved, <laughs> and it looks significantly better. And the other thing is if you do it like this, you can kind of sneak it to make it bigger if you wanted to. And all you really have to do is just change the size of the roofs. You know, fix the roof pieces a little bit to, to match the size you're going for. That is very tall, but <laughs> you kind of see what we're, what we're aiming for here. And then you can have windows on the sides. And then if you wanted to, you would probably put like dormers in the front of the house, right? So that you could actually have windows. And now we have this like giant second floor that's completely hidden by a roof. You just had to do a few different roof pieces. Now you might see that it's kind of clipping a tiny bit here. Like the, the roof is clipping on these sides. And that's kind of annoying, this clipping above the dormers. There is a way around that. It just involves making the roof <laughs> in a lot of different pieces. It's sort of similar to what happened in the other house, like in this one. The staircase was causing some clipping issues. If I if I put one in now, you can see what I'm talking about. So I don't know, say I wanna have a nice like overhang here. I want a like nice two-story living room in this space. Looks super cool, but oh no, all of a sudden the roof is clipping in my dormers. How do I solve that problem with a lot of different tiny roof pieces? <laughs> and this same thing will go for like any roof clipping you have. The second you like break the room, that the sim sees as a room, you'll start having clipping problems. And this could happen in any house if you try to have one of these overhangs, especially. So to fix it, what you're gonna wanna do is start from one of the sides. And so I put a little tiny roof piece here. I hold shift to get rid of the overhang on just one piece. I'll do it again in the middle here. And I'm, I'm doing this so that I can make sure that there's no overhang on any little bit. Now I realize now that these dormers are the same size as the house. So you can't really fix this problem. So you make your dormers smaller. This is a terrible example. And then for this piece, I'm gonna get another roof, make it only one tile wide, and then just fill in all of the empty roof with like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different roof pieces. And that way there's no clipping. <laughs> It fits perfectly and you don't have that issue anymore. So it's annoying, but it's definitely doable. It just takes a lot of different roof pieces. Fair warning, when you have that issue happening, some of the different roof trims will clip onto the inside. You can see this roof trim is clipping through the wall for some reason, which is really annoying. Not all of them do that. My go-to is this last one, the beveled out roof trim, because it doesn't clip on the walls. So you don't have that problem. But see, some of the hardest parts of roofing are just dealing with like the weird finicky Sims glitches and also just knowing what you want the house to look like. Sometimes it could be best if you were really confused on how to roof a house to like Google a picture of a real house, find one that you like and try 
to recreate their roof. It really helps to have like an idea in mind and to like think about how real houses look with their roofs because then it actually makes sense when you're trying to do it. So for example, I really don't think I'm very good at building like modern houses. I know I showed you like two of them today, but very much out of my comfort zone. I like to build houses like this. Little, cozy, small-ish, traditional family homes. When I look at houses like this, I feel very intimidated. Like I don't know how to build them. But if you look kind of closely, you can see that a lot of these houses use what looks kind of like platforms, like what we have as platforms, as the roof. This one kind of has platforms. This one kind of has that multi-leveled look. It looks like it's got that flat sort of platformed roof. I think I'll try to build something kind of like this really fast, just as an example. I feel like a lot of these modern houses are kind of just cubes, right? If I build a few squares, will it work? I don't know. That's a random set of shapes. <laughs> That'll, that'll do. We're only here to put a roof on this, right? Sure, random looking house. Again, this is just for the sake of the roof. So on this house, we might want to do something with platforms, right? I'm gonna try and follow the same shape the house is with these two boxes, kind of, and put platforms like that. So with platforms, you can draw them just like a room, and then you can use these arrows to make them taller or, or smaller. <laughs> I might use like a three high platform for this side, or maybe a two high one. I don't know. <laughs> and then possibly a three high one on this side with a balcony on one side. See, I'm acting like I made this up. I'm just copying the picture, but <laughs> I'm just trying to show you how to do the roof. So it's flat, but it's not like flat. And then I would put half walls around it because then it sort of just looks like an extension of that second floor wall. Just want the half walls to be that exact same height as the platform. And then when you paint it, like with how they had wood on this one side, the wall color kind of continues up the whole thing and it looks like just one continuous wall. I think a lot of times doing these like modern houses can be a little bit easier because the roof doesn't have to look like anything. You can kind of just do whatever you want. Whereas when you're building a house like this, there's sort of like a right and a wrong. I mean, not really, but a million of these houses exist. You might even have some in your neighborhood. I, I don't have houses like this around where I live. I live in Florida. <laughs> they don't really build things like this down here. But this kind of thing gives you more room to be a little bit more creative with like the shape and with the style and stuff. Because you aren't really going for like a specific like traditional classic house style. Platforms are very useful though. Now I want to talk a little bit about glass roofs and skylights. Because we all know them, we all love them, but they can be kind of hard to work with. So while we're here with this kind of house I'm going to show you, I think platforms are super useful for hiding skylights. Now we have an item that kind of is like a skylight, like that glass roof flooring you might want. So if you have island living, you have this like square thing, you can use that as a skylight really easily, but not all of you have that pack and maybe you want something more interesting. So here's what I do. I'm gonna go into the tallest platform because it's a little bit easier to do this way. I'm gonna pick a random spot and I'm gonna delete it. So I have this like hole, <laughs> right? And then you can take any sort of roof piece you want. I'm gonna take this half gabled one because it feels like it will fit the best. Make it as absolutely flat as possible. It won't be perfectly flat, which I feel like is a little bit unrealistic because in real life, this seems like a water trap to me. Like if it rained, how does this drain? I don't know, but that's not my problem. Then you just make that one piece a glass texture. You could use any of the glass textures if you wanted to, even just the plain one. And then you have a free secret skylight and you can make it as big or as small as you want. I mean, no one can stop you. And it's super easy to do. And it's really easy to hide with the platforms because if the roof was just flat, flat, at, like the regular height. I mean, then you're just gonna have a big glass piece sitting on top of the roof and sometimes it's harder to blend in. So I found that having like the platform around it, you know, kind of like this is really helpful. Although it can't just be one tall. It has to be at least two tall for it to hide the whole thing properly, which is a little bit annoying because you can't really fix it. You can use any roof piece to do glass roofs too. I just find that sometimes it's hard to make them blend in because like, look at how weird that looks, you know, with the overhang. So then you have to get rid of the overhang, but then it still looks kind of weird. And I don't know. I just, I find it's really difficult to make this work in most house styles, especially in like your average Sims build. This kind of works on this house, but it, it wouldn't really work on this one, you know? And so a lot of times what I'll do is try to hide the glass roof with roof pieces again. So this is gonna take quite a few roof pieces. We're gonna put one on the sides and one at the bottom, kind of like that. Now that's really small, so you might wanna hold shift to get rid of all the corner pieces, you know? And then you've opened up a space and that is where I would put the glass roof. So I'd stick a little roof piece in there. It's basically the same size as the whole thing, just with no overhang. And then I made it one tile smaller. So on a three tile wide one, I made it just two tiles wide. So it's like a little bit lower. And then I'd put the glass piece on there and sort of like hide the glass 
on the inside. And once you put like some roof texture on it and some trim, I mean, it blends in perfectly and it looks a little bit less out of place. I found that this method works best on pieces of the house that are like this one, like little bump outs and stuff when it like blends into a second floor because then you can have it like line up against the second floor. I found that it can be a little bit harder to do and like a little bit more tricky when you've got just like a regular roof you're trying to blend it into, but it's definitely possible to do something similar on like, the top of a building. Again, you're just gonna want to have like a million of these different roof pieces all blended together. That's probably the hardest part is trying to like get all of the roof pieces. I mean, this itself is what one, two, three, four already, but you could always do this like this one and have it up there. So now that I've got all the edges outlined, I might take this, grab it, put it up to the edge. But that's like super low down. So what I might do is like raise it up to blend in a little bit better with the top. It still looks a bit weird. <laughs> Maybe we'll move that to fill it up, but then I'll make this glass and you kind of have that similar look I just have a really hard time making the whole thing glass I I don't know how to make entire glass roofs work But I think I know how to make little little pockets of glass roof work. <laughs> anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you I think the main takeaways number one put the roof on the largest part of the house first and then go from there Number two look at reference photos It really helps when you're first starting out to like see other houses and get an idea of what like real life houses look like and honestly mimic them, copy them. And number three, acknowledge that The Sims is kind of glitchy and kind of annoying to deal with sometimes, and it's probably not you, it might just be the game. <laughs> they don't make it easy for you in this one. Ah, the joys of The Sims 3 and the auto roof button that we no longer have. Anyway, on that note, I'm gonna go. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I hope that I could have been some help, and I make a lot of building videos on this channel, so honestly, if you just watch some of those, maybe you can pick up some tips and tricks that way too. Well, fingers crossed. <laughs> that is my goal. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. I've got a bunch of build tutorials that are super old now, but I will link them down below. And I'm probably going to start making some more of them. I feel like it's about time we do some updates. So if you have any suggestions for like specific build tutorials you want, leave those in the comments too.